Ever wonder how one minute you're in a great mood, and an hour later you're tired, irritable, and aggressively hangry? Spoiler alert, your brain's chemical messengers are hard at work. That surge to check your phone every five minutes? Dopamine. Feeling focused and alert while writing your English essay? Norepinephrine. Totally vibing to your Spotify playlist without a care in the world? Serotonin's got your back. In this video, we're continuing with topic 1.3 of Unit 1, diving into how these chemical messengers, neurotransmitters and hormones, quietly influence your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So if you're ready, grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. In our last video, we talked about how neurons send messages. But here's the weird part. They never actually touch each other. It's like neurons have cooties. Between every two neurons is a tiny space called the synapse, also known as the synaptic gap. And since action potentials can't just leap across the gap like Spider-Man, the neuron has to switch strategies. This is where chemical messengers come in, tiny molecules called neurotransmitters that carry signals across the synaptic gap. As we explore each one, I'll also highlight what happens when things go wrong. Because for every neurotransmitter, there's a delicate balance. And when the balance is off, it can lead to real consequences, changes in behavior, shifts in mood, and in some cases, serious mental health disorders. To help you remember these neurotransmitters, let's paint a picture. You've trained for months to run a marathon, 26.2 miles of sweat, determination, and sore feet. From the moment the race starts, acetylcholine is firing. Why? Because it controls muscle movement. Every heroic dodge around a rogue pigeon, that's acetylcholine in action. It also helps with memory, like remembering which checkpoint has water cups or the porta potty. Too little acetylcholine is linked to Alzheimer's disease, a progressive brain disease that destroys memory and other important mental functions. Norepinephrine helps you stay focused and alert. It's your internal, we've got this. Norepinephrine keeps your brain in high alert so you can dodge that sneaky pothole at mile 14. Imbalances in norepinephrine are linked to depression and anxiety. Too little can drag your energy down, too much can make you feel on edge. Glutamate is the primary excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Translation, glutamate's main job is to excite neurons, getting them to fire off messages and talk to each other, like it's a group chat during finals week. It plays a huge role in learning and memory, which is why during your marathon, glutamate is right there with you, helping you remember the route, keep your brain laser focused, and stay mentally locked in mile after mile. But too much glutamate can overstimulate the brain and is linked to migraines and seizures. So now you're nearing the end of the race. Your legs are tired, your shirt is soaked, but you keep going. That drive to push through the pain, that's dopamine. It's not just a pleasure chemical, it's the motivation molecule nudging you forward with the promise of a medal, a banana, or just bragging rights. Dopamine is the pleasure and reward neurotransmitter, making you feel accomplished and unstoppable. But like every neurotransmitter, balance matters. Too little dopamine is linked to Parkinson's disease, a movement disorder where the brain struggles to control muscles, often leading to tremors. Too much dopamine, though, is associated with schizophrenia, where the brain can have trouble distinguishing what's real and what's not. All right, the crowd is cheering, dopamine is flowing, you're practically levitating, until, bam, you stumble, fall, and eat asphalt at mile 25. Your knee slams into the pavement. Instantly, substance P springs into action. It's the neurotransmitter responsible for sending pain signals to your brain. Think P for pain. But before you completely lose it, your brain sends in the backup squad, endorphins. These are your brain's natural painkillers, basically your built-in ibuprofen. They help block some of the pain and might even trigger that bizarre phenomenon runners talk about called runner's high. Later, when your body finally crashes, GABA, your brain's chill-out chemical, takes over, helping you relax, unwind, and drift in a much-needed post-marathon nap. If glutamate is your brain's hype man, always shouting, go, 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 then GABA is the calm best friend, gently saying, let's just breathe and lie down for a bit. Too little GABA? That's when the brain struggles to hit the brakes which is often linked to anxiety disorders. But hold up, our story is not over yet. Because while neurotransmitters are your brain's fast-talking messengers, darting across tiny synapses with lightning speed, there's another team working behind the scenes, hormones. Hormones are like the slow but powerful messengers of the body. Instead of hopping across microscopic gaps, hormones are released into the bloodstream and travel through the entire body. And they influence everything from stress and hunger to love, sleep, and mood. So now that you've crossed the finish line and your neurons have gelled out, your hormones take center stage. 
Remember that surge of energy you felt when the race started? That instant jolt, heart pounding, legs ready to launch? That was adrenaline, your body's fight or flight hormone. Released by the adrenal glands, it preps your body for action. Increased heart rate, expanded airways, extra glucose, basically it turns you into a temporary superhero. After the race, you are starving and your stomach growls like a wild animal. Enter ghrelin, your body's hunger hormone. It's released by the stomach and tells your brain, feed me. But after you devour your celebratory burger and fries, leptin steps in. It's your body's natural fullness signal, or a scientist called satiety. Ghrelin and leptin are basically in a constant tug of war. Later, when you're hugging your friend who cheered for you all the way, or crying happy tears with your running crew, that warm fuzzy feeling, that's oxytocin, the bonding hormone. It promotes connection, trust, and emotional warmth. And finally, as the sun sets and your body begs for rest, melatonin starts to rise. Released by the pineal gland, melatonin helps regulate your sleep-wake cycle, also known as a circadian rhythm, guiding you from post-race glory into a sweet, sweet slumber. All right, let's lock in with a quick recap. Neurotransmitters and hormones may be small, but they are mighty. They coordinate everything from your muscle movement to your emotions, your focus, your sleep, your pain to pleasure. Tattoo this on your psych brain. Neurotransmitters are fast-acting chemical messengers that travel between neurons, helping you move, think, feel, and remember. Hormones are slower messengers that travel through the bloodstream and influence mood, hunger, stress, sleep, and more. Acetylcholine controls voluntary movements and helps with memory. Dopamine is linked to motivation, reward, and movements. Too little is linked to Parkinson's. Too much is linked to schizophrenia. Serotonin helps regulate mood and emotion stability. Imbalances are tied to depression. Norepinephrine boosts alertness and focus, but too much can leave you feeling anxious. GABA is your brain's chill-out chemical, helping calm activity and reduce anxiety. Glutamate is your brain's primary excitatory neurotransmitter, great for learning and memory, but too much can lead to migraines or seizures. Substance P sends pain messengers to your brain. Think P for pain. Endorphins are natural painkillers, released during stress or exercise. And hormones like adrenaline, oxytocin, ghrelin, leptin, and melatonin help regulate everything from fight or flight to bonding to bedtime. All right, thanks for watching AV Psych Brainiacs. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that next video. And as always, when in doubt, trust the data, not your gut. See you next time.